Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we're going to tie my friend Matt Winkler's new pattern for uh, Umpqua next year and it's called uh, a balanced leather leech. And uh, the idea of a balanced fly um, is a fly tied on a jig hook with the bead sort of extended out on a straight pin out the front so that the fly hangs horizontal. You can see I've got this one uh, just tied to a piece of heavy tippet uh, with a loop knot, but you can see it hangs horizontal um, and it's made to hang under an indicator or to fish horizontally. Um, pretty crafty idea there. Um, but what Matt has sort of kicked up a notch is this slinky little ultra suede tail that he's added to, to sort of a conventional mohair leech pattern. Um, that is super wiggly, really good action on that, um, and a, a very simple tie as well. So we're going to start with an Umqua XT500 jig hook. Um, and this is a size 10 that we've got here. This is a barbed jig hook. Um, and I, I tend to like these barbed hooks just because um, it's not that I don't pinch them down, but the uh, uh, barb allows me to hang a dropper off of it as well, um, if need be. Um, it's not something I'd necessarily do with this pattern, but if I, if I needed to, I could do it with this, this jig hook with the, with the barb. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a dressmaker pin. And what I've done here is just sort of measured, see if you can see my little notch there, you can see back by my fingers, um, I've sort of measured about how long this needs to be. I want this to extend off the front of the upright here uh, about another half a shank or so. So I've made a little notch there and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to chop that off with a pair of wire cutters. And I want to save the head of the pin and onto it, so we've got just the head here, onto that piece that I've cut off I'm going to take a tungsten bead, um, and this is a 1 8 inch, um, you know, in the case of this, this olive one, we're going to use a 1 8 inch copper tungsten bead. And what I've done is I've threaded that on with the countersink toward the pinhead. So you can see when I pull that down in there, uh, that pinhead is hidden inside, and that's what anchors the bead in place. So I'll take and set that aside for a second. I'm going to come in with some 6 aught unithread, and I'm going to start this just start dressing the shank. I just want to make a smooth even even thread base. Um, I'll go ahead and go all the way back to the bend and then come back up to the front. And then I'll take my my pin here and lay it in right on top of the hook and just start binding it right to the shank. And you can see where that cut end extends to. Uh, let me slide my bead forward here. You can kind of see where my extended piece extends to. Um, on the first couple of these, you might want to kind of hang a couple of them, um, you know, early, um, even just tie up to this point um, and, and hang them just to make sure that they balance correctly so that they hang horizontally. Um, or you, once you've got one, you can use it as sort of your, your gauge. And I'm pretty darn good there, so I've been practicing. So I'm going to anchor this down in place jump off the end of that pin, come right back up to the front. And then when I get to the eye, I'm going to jump over it and wrap right up to the back of the bead. And at the back of the bead, I'll make a little thread dam here. So we're just going to make a wedge of thread to kind of pinch that bead in place up against the head of the pin. And obviously this doesn't have to be real pretty. We're going to have covered this up, plenty of chance to cover this up. So once I've got that all anchored in place, I'll run my thread all the way back to the bend like so. Now for the tail, this is uh, a piece of, of what Matt calls leech leather, which is dark olive ultra suede. And we want this about the shank length long, which now includes the hook shank and the pin. Um, so I'll measure that there. And then I'll lay that in on top and you can kind of soft wrap it to get it to buckle around the hook. Let me get a couple more turns on it here and I'll let you see. So that buckles around the bend of the hook. And then I'll anchor that in place right up to the back of the of the pin, and I can cut off any extra there. So we've got our tail in place. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to make a dubbing loop. 
And in the case of this dubbing loop, this is nothing special here. I'm going to make about a six inch long dubbing loop. Cross my thread over and capture that. And then I'll bring my thread right up to the back of the bead. And what I do here, I know you can't see it here on the camera, but I'm going to take one leg of that dubbing loop and put it in my material spring so that just is going to hold this open um, while I grab my dubbing. Now the dubbing for this is Arizona synthetic, uh, I'm sorry, Arizona semi-seal dubbing um, in peacock green. And this is, this is a great color. You can see it's a lot of different textures, a lot of different colors kind of mixed together in there. They're um, really beautiful stuff. And I'm going to take, take a pinch of this and I'm going to start to add it to the dubbing loop. So I'll pull my loop down and I'll just take small clumps at a time, push them right up to the hook, put them between the two strands of thread. And you want to do this fairly sparsely. It's easy to overdo it. And you want to try to avoid any clumping as well. Spread that out just a bit. We need one more little pinch in there. Here at the bottom. So I've got, like I say, about a five or six inch long dubbing loop prepped up in there. I'm going to pinch my thread just below my dubbing whirl and I'll spin it up and just sort of let the spin start to work up the, the thread. And I want to twist this up good and tight. Um, I want this, this dubbing loop to be good and shaggy like that. And once I've got that tight, I can come in with a wire brush or a piece of Velcro and sort of really go at it here to pick out anything that's twisted up or caught so that I've got a nice even loop of dubbing. And I'm going to use the bare thread here at the base to kind of work back right to the base of the tail. And then I find the, the easiest thing to do here is rather than think of wrapping this one turn right in front of the other, um, I like to spiral it out just a bit. Um, so kind of think of palmering more so than butting the turns one next to the other. And I'm just going to start to wrap this dubbing loop forward. And you can see I sort of comb the fibers back out of the way as I go, right up to the eye of the hook. And then once there, I'm going to jump around and I'm going to come in front onto the pin. And I'll just continue wrapping as if I were on the shank. And if you've done it just right, which it appears I have, I'm going to run out of dubbing right up here behind the bead. Um, if you if you aren't that lucky and you still have some dubbing in there, you can hang your dubbing whirl um, and just let that thread unwind and pull out the extra. But since I'm, since I'm good here, I'm going to go ahead and tie that off with a few turns and clip that thread out and sweep everything back and just build a little neck there behind that bead and I can come in and whip finish there. So that's the tying process. on the balanced leather leech. We're going to come in and brush him out a bit. You can see how shaggy he is. We're going to brush him out a little bit more and kind of get him a little bit more streamlined here. I'll grab my brush and we'll get right to it. So I'm going to come in and start sweeping all of this dubbing back toward the bend. And fairly aggressively, I actually like to kind of go even against the grain a bit to make sure that I get anything that was trapped out. Make sure you go all the way around the hook. About like so. Um, if you've got anything extra long, you can come in and, and trim that out. We really don't have too much here, but um, you know, rather than come in at a straight angle, I like to kind of sweep things in to keep that sort of leachy shape. And there we've got our finished balanced leather leech. You can see the hook eye peeking out there in the middle, um, right there to keep everything upright and, and horizontal in the water when we fish it. Um, pretty creative little pattern. Um, great for carp, great for uh, trout in lakes. 
Um, you can certainly dead drift this under an indicator in a river. Uh, keeps it keeps it horizontal. Uh, it kind of brings to mind some some other applications for the same kind of same kind of thing. Uh, Matt's a pretty creative guy. He catches much bigger fish than I do, and uh, he knows his stuff. So when he's got a secret little pattern and I uh, stumble onto it, uh, you can bet I'm gonna I'm gonna tie a few up. So. Uh, give the give these a, a whirl. See what you think. If you're a still water guy, you're going to love it. If you're a carp guy, you're going to love it. Um, and even if you're just a just a river guy, um, this is a pretty darn good pattern. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Take care.